Hello and welcome, Matt here from MrLike.com. This video will tell you all you need to know about the Mamiya 6 medium format film camera, including comparisons to both Hasselblad and the Mamiya 7 system, together with example photos, portraits and non-portraits. Stay tuned and I'll show you the three lenses for the Mamiya 6 camera, a side-by-side -side comparison to the Mamiya 7 camera, and then we'll talk a little bit about why I prefer the Mamiya 6 to the Hasselblad, even though I love the Hasselblad. Okay, if you've seen my videos before, first things first, how much does the Mamiya 6 cost? Now, <laughs> they seem extremely popular. I went to the extent that I could find almost none in the whole of Europe listed on eBay. I had to base my cost of the Mamiya 6 camera from looking at eBay completed listings from like the last few months because this is no current ones to give me a benchmark. Looking at completed listings at the time of making this video, the average price seems to be between £1,500 up to £2,000. Now with the price of the Mamiya 6 starting to reach closer to £2,000, that's now giving you a similar price point to both the Leica M6, which we've talked about a lot in the past, and also the Mamiya 7, which we talked about recently. But in this video, we're looking at the Mamiya 6. If you're looking to treat yourself to a Mamiya 6, I'll include an eBay link in the description below. One thing to avoid confusion, if you're new to kind of this camera system, if you look on eBay and you suddenly see something called a Mamiya 6 for maybe less than £500 and it looks like a different design it's got like silver on it and things like this but it says Mamiya 6 kind of be aware that there is more than one Mamiya 6 camera as with many camera manufacturers they like to complicate things by using the same name with different camera designs this is the same for the Mamiya 6 so this video is obviously talking about this black plastic looking Mamiya 6 and not a camera that looks a little bit like this. This is a vintage folding 6x6 film camera. Obviously it's not a Mamiya 6 as you can tell by the name, but there is a Mamiya 6x6 camera that looks a little bit like this, which you can find on eBay for a lot less money than the Mamiya 6 we're talking about. The earlier Mamiya 6 is a fixed lens folding bellows camera, similar to the Fuji GF670, whereas the more modern Mamiya 6 is not. Just wanted to point that out, if you suddenly see a Mamiya 6 and it says, I don't know, £100 or £300, I don't know the exact price. But if you see it really cheap and you think it looks different and you can't see a lens on the front, it's not the Mamiya 6 I'm talking about in this video and you cannot change the lenses. So what is the Mamiya 6? This is a 6x6 format, medium format film camera. Very similar to the Mamiya 7 in some respects, except it shoots square format, say like a Hasselblad, compared to 6x7, which a Mamiya 7 shoots. Both of them have the very similar kind of plastic composite design. But the huge benefit of the Mamiya 7 is, look at the size. This is a 6x6 camera. And why is it so small? It's small because they call it a folding camera, but in, I think, more correct English, it is a collapsible lens camera. What do I mean by that? So this is the Mamiya 6 with the lens collapsed. This is the Mamiya 6 with the lens opened up in the form that you need to take pictures. So when you're taking photos, it needs to look like this. When you're finished and you're packing it down, it goes down to that. And to collapse the lens, you pr press the button underneath the lens itself here. So you hold and pull, hold and push. Now this fact alone that it's a smaller system makes it so much better because it's so much easier to carry with you if you're doing maybe vacation photos or travel photography or even street photography. If you have this around your neck and there's so little kind of protruding it's such a nice kind of camera system to, to, to own. So more features about the Mamiya 6. The Mamiya 6 system has three lenses. The Mamiya 7 system has six lenses. The Mamiya 6 has all the frame lines built into the viewfinder. So you don't need any external hot shoe viewfinder. Making it so much better from both a cost perspective and size perspective because not having a big lump on the top of your camera makes it much more portable together with the fact that it's a collapsible lens design. Both the Mamiya 6 and the Mamiya 7 have light meters. The difference being the Mamiya 6 has a center weighted kind of average light meter where the Mamiya 7 has a spot meter. So most people tend to prefer the metering on the Mamiya 6. 
And personally, it's been re- I found it really good and I've had no issues. Both the Mamiya 6 and the Mamiya 7 have the auto or AE mode. Um, this is not something I use on any camera, but for those people that like to just put it on lock to auto and then kind of fit and forget almost. I'm sure this is very appealing for some people. The Mamiya 7 also has it, but I forgot to mention it in that video. So both cameras have the AE function. In terms of film loading, I've done a video on how to load film in the Mamiya 7 and it is identical to how to load film on the Mamiya 6. I will link it in the description below this video, so do check that out. It is identical, both cameras, in terms of how you load film. So inside it looks, everything looks very much the same, but you've got the red, the red buttons here and the uh, pressure plate on the back. The closing mechanism on the side of the camera is identical. If you're not aware, there's two models of the Mamiya 6. There's the Mamiya 6 that just basically says Mamiya 6 on the top. And then there's the Mamiya 6 MF, which basically stands for multi-format. So the original Mamiya 6 will only shoot 6x6. The later MF version will shoot uh, 6x6, 6x45 and 35mm film. So three different film formats. Other than that, both cameras are pretty similar. As I mentioned briefly earlier, the Mamiya 6 has three lenses in its system. So you have the 75mm f3.5, which is the smallest lens of the three. And it's kind of a perfect kind of walkabout lens. 75mm being the kind of rough equivalent to 80mm on other medium format cameras, being the kind of normal lens or 50mm ish lens on a 35mm camera. So 75mm is the smallest and the lightest. Then, if you're looking for something wider, there is the 50mm f4 G lens. This is incredibly sharp, and I'll share some example images at the end. Very good lens and also quite compact. And the third lens available is the 150mm Mamiya. I don't know if you can see that, which is a much bigger lens with a um, lens hood attached. Here is the 50mm, 50mm on the top and 150mm on the bottom. Obviously with the hood off, it's a much smaller lens. Because the camera body collapses and not the lens, it means all three lenses, the 50 millimeter, 75 mil and 150 mil, all work with this kind of collapsing design. It's not only limited to the 75 mil. The only benefit with the 75 mil is it's the smallest lens, meaning once collapsed, it gives the smallest kind of form factor. Like the Mamiya 7, all the Mamiya 6 lenses are leaf shutter lenses, meaning you can sync flash to the maximum shutter speed of 1 over 500. Again, like the Mamiya 7, the Mamiya 6 is an electronic camera, meaning you need a battery to be able to take pictures. As with the Mamiya 7, you can fit the batteries just under the, the grip. Talking of the grip, the grip of this camera is extremely well designed and it's very comfortable in the hand. So what is the Mamiya 6 camera good for? Personally, I have used the Mamiya 6 for both travel photography and portrait photography. As you're probably aware, the Mamiya 6, like the Mamiya 7, is a rangefinder camera, meaning you're looking through the viewfinder and not through the lens. The drawbacks of rangefinder cameras is they cannot focus particularly close. And the advantage is they're generally smaller and because there's no mirror inside you can use these cameras as a slower shutter speed handheld for kind of available light photography. The fact that it's arranged for under design is why Mamiya were able to make this camera so compact. Personally I've used this on cycling trips and kind of hiking type holidays and I've also used the camera with filters and without filters. I find the lens is very good and reasonably flare resistant. I never bother using the filter on the 75mm or the 50mm. If you've followed the MrLikeA.com blog in the past and perhaps me on social media, the likes of Flickr and Instagram, you'll know that I'm a big fan of the Hasselblad camera system. So why am I giving kind of conflicting messages and saying that the Mamiya 6 is better for travel, for example? What I've done to give you a better visual, I've just gone and grabbed a Hasselblad. So this is my amazing Hasselblad 501C. I also use Hasselblad 500CMs. I use this most of the time with the prism finder because I find it much more easy for shooting portraits. So with the amazing Zeiss optics on my Hasbad system, why am I recommending that the Mamiya 6 is better? Simple reason, form factor. Here's the Mamiya 6 and there is the Hasselblad. And you can see there is quite a lot of size difference. So to recap, both these cameras are 6x6 format, taking 120 film, giving you 12 frames per roll of film. 
The only real difference is this is a kind of through the lens SLR-ish type camera where this is a rangefinder camera. And the high spider is a modular camera where you can have additional film backs, say one for black and white, one for color. The different finders, a lot more different lenses. I've talked briefly about the Haspad 500 in a recent video, but I'll do a much more detailed review as we go forward. So that's why I normally take my Mami A6 for travel photography, not the Hasselblad. If it was a choice of the Mami A6 or Mami A7 for say travel photography, again, I would take the Mami A6, no question. And this is why. Look at the size difference. The body itself is a similar size on the both the 6 and the 7. It's just the fact that the 6 collapses and the 7 doesn't. So for me, I much prefer the Mamiya 6. I would say the only real benefit of shooting the Mamiya 7 is, I guess, it was two benefits. The obvious benefit is if you much prefer 6x7 film, get the Mamiya 7. If you like ultra-wides, get the Mamiya 7 and get the 43mm because the widest you can shoot on the Mamiya 6 is 50mm and in only 6x6 format. Personally, I much prefer 6x6 format and I like small cameras, so it's kind of a no-brainer. Mamiya 6 is kind of my choice. Now, another conflicting message that I'm about to give you is in the Mamiya 7 video, I said how amazing the Fuji GF670 is. I need to do a review on this and I will do it. I've just, I've kind of lost it. <laughs> So when I find it, I will do a review. I was kind of singing the praise of the Fuji in the Mamiya 7 video, but I use the Mamiya 6 much more. Why is that? Number one, durability. I think the durability of the Mamiya 6 and 7 is much better than the bellows style design of the Fuji GF670. It's quite a fragile kind of camera design. And the fact that it's expensive, it's kind of a combination of don't want to break it, and it's easier to break. The other more practical reason I'd carry the Mamiya 6 is it's a three lens system, not a one lens system. So in the past I've traveled with say the 50 mil and the 150 mil, and that gives me both wide shots and long shots, where the fixed lens Fuji can only give you standard look, like standard kind of 80 mil. So that's why I've used my Mamiya 6 more than the Fuji. So that's for travel photography. So here's some kind of travel photos shot with the Mamiya 6. I'd cycle with a rucksack and normally carry two lenses. It's a much smaller setup than say carrying my Hasselblad. Now what about for portraits? In the Mamiya 7 video we saw the uh, Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2 camera and I was saying how amazing it is for portraits and it is, but equally it's not a camera that you can throw in your bag and fly to Poland or fly to wherever you want to fly to. Very easily because it's such a big system, you end up compromising and taking less lenses or less second and third cameras or less film or less clothes or I don't take many clothes as it is because I'm just taking a bag full of cameras and like a pair of pants. <laughs> it's a bit more than that, but it is very extreme in terms of I'm literally carrying the bare minimum of everything except camera equipment and then just carrying a beep load of camera equipment because that's what's important to me. So the simple fact I guess is the Mamiya 7RZ, RB and Hasselblad are studio cameras, meaning they were designed to be used by professionals in a studio environment predominantly. For that reason they're not particularly portable. The beauty of something like the Mamiya 6 is it will give you the same 6x6 format and big negatives as you get on the Hasblad. Or if you use a Mamiya 7, it'll give you the same size negatives as the Mamiya RZ67. But because they're rangefinder cameras, you can carry them with you to kind of more exotic places than Coventry, which is where I live in, in England. So for portraits, the Mamiya 6 can do the job. The biggest drawback, like any rangefinder camera, is you cannot get particularly close to the the Mamiya 6 can do portraits and I have used it for quite extensively for portraits. I went through a period of using it a huge amount, especially in Poland. It does a job and it does a job well. The Mamiya 6 lenses are all excellent quality lenses. I think I still prefer the rendering of Hasbad Zeiss lenses, but if it's a matter of being able to carry a medium format camera overseas rather than no medium format camera overseas, I still think the Mamiya 6 does an excellent job and I don't dislike the photos at all. So here are a series of portraits shot with the Mamiya 6. 
70 80 percent of them i probably shot with the send 5 mil lens because i had that for the longest time and then more recently i shot some with the 150 mil lens and i guess just more to try it out and for novelty factor i also shot a few with the 50 mil lens the 50 mil lens is more suited for me for kind of travel photography the 150 mil lens does work nicely for portraits giving you a bit more compression and getting you closer to your subject So to recap, when people write to me and say, what medium format camera should I take when I'm going on my trip to X next year, Hasblad or something else? I always tell them I take my Mami S6 for the reasons we've talked about in this video. Again, if you prefer 6x7 format, take Mami S7, which you can see in the previous video. So that's it, quick summary of the Mami S6 camera. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, hit the like button and I'll know to do more of the same kind of videos. To see the video on the Mami S7, click here. And for more medium format film camera reviews, click here. Back soon with more reviews. Thanks, bye.